Hey folks, Casey here with Two Tankers. Welcome back to our video series on how to properly calibrate your M2 CNC. Today's video is sponsored by MakerMade. They're the manufacturers of the M2 CNC. And today we're going to tackle the chains tab. That's the tab that I get the most questions on. It's also the most daunting tab to new users. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get through that tab. So stay tuned. So the first step that you need to do is you need to disconnect your sled from the chains. That means you got to hang your sled somewhere. I like to use just a little bungee cord. I wrap it around the top side, underneath the front arm, lift the whole system up, and hang it, and now the weight's off my chains. The next step is to disconnect the chains from the rollers. You can do this by pulling the two pins. They ask you to then connect the chains together. The way they want you to connect them is to simply put one pin in here, like so, and then connect the other chain through the pin, like so. Let's start by clicking on the Chains tab, then scroll down and click on Begin Measuring Chains. I click on the Distance drop down and choose 100 millimeter. Then I click on the up arrow on the Y axis to jog the machine and move the pin up towards the top beam. Just a word of caution, be careful moving the pin large distances as it gets closer to the top beam as you could damage your motor mounts. Now that we've moved our pin up towards our top beam, now we need to move left and right to center that pin right to the center mark we made earlier in our pre-cal videos on the top beam. To do that, I reduce my movement to 1 or 0.5 millimeter and I jog left and right. I physically ensure that the pin is perfectly centered on my mark. Once I have that centered and I'm comfortable, I'm ready to move to the next step. Now that my pin is centered, I'm ready to click next and move on to the slack chain section. Here I simply use my down arrow on the Y axis to move the chain and the pin back down towards the sled on my spoil board. While you are slacking your chains and moving them down on the board, stop every now and then, pull the chain tight and put a mark where the cotter pin touches the board. We'll use this to reference against our original center measurement we took during our pre-cal video. This will tell us how far off our top beam is in the center to our spoil board center. Alright folks, so just a real quick recap of what we've done so far. We hung our sled, removed the chains, connected the chain together with the pin, moved it up to our top beam, made sure it was fairly tight, centered the pin with the top beam mark that we made earlier in our pre-cal video, lined that up, and then we slacked the chains back down. And while we were bringing the chains back down, you noticed I stopped in two spots and made a couple of marks. That tells me how far off my top beam is, the center of my top beam, to the center of my spoil board. That's what that was telling me. That's why we marked that earlier in our pre-cal process. And in mine, it shows that I'm about one millimeter off to this side from my top beam to my spoil board being perfectly centered. So keep that in mind. We can now reconnect the chains to the sled. Be cautious here and ensure you put the pin in the chains as in this picture right here to ensure that we have a good solid link holding the weight of the sled. We can now take the weight of the sled and hang it on the chains. All right, folks, listen up here. Here's a pro tip for you. As you've lowered the chain and you made a mark on your chain, I could easily see that the center of my top beam right here was one millimeter, as I said earlier, over here on this side of the board from that original line I made. Now that I've connected my chains here and let the sled weight take the weight on the chains, now I can see that according to my bit down here, I'm still one millimeter off. That's a good thing because here's the point. If I was one millimeter up here, but down here I'm four millimeters off, 
That means my line's kind of at an angle, and this whole deck is cockeyed a little bit. It's skewed one way or the other. Instead, I noticed that my bit stayed one millimeter on this side of that line I made earlier in our pre-cal video. So it's one millimeter all the way down. That tells me that my spoil board deck is square to my top beam. It's not perfectly center, I'm off one millimeter, but it is square. That's what we're looking for. Now that I have reconnected my sled, I can now click the next button. This section tells you to connect the sled and rotate the sprockets until one tooth on each sprocket is pointed straight up. This is an important step, so take your time and ensure it is done correctly. Lower your move increments to one millimeter and simply use the up and down Y-axis jog buttons to move the sled up until the motor sprockets are in the right position. As you can see, I already have a painted chain link, so I am going to rotate that same chain link back to the top position to keep my system clean. If this is your first time measuring the chains, I recommend just moving up in small increments such as one millimeter until one sprocket has a tooth in the straight up position. Once you have one sprocket with a tooth straight up, then check the other motor and sprocket and see if it has a tooth sticking straight up as well. In some instances, the sprockets will not match. There is a simple way to move one motor at a time to ensure that one sprocket stays the same while you move one motor to get its tooth sticking straight up. To do that, I simply use my back or previous arrows that you see below and go back two pages. I go to the Align Cotter Pin page and I use the angled arrows to control the motor that is not pointing straight north. I click those arrows until that sprocket is now pointing north or straight up just like the other sprocket. Once the motors both have a sprocket pointing north, I click next twice again and get back to the attached sled page. And I can now move forward with marking those chain links with a red marker. All right, folks, so let's recap this step right here. This is one of the most confusing steps and I get the most questions about it on my channel. So let's talk about it. We went ahead and we connected our sled back. And then we moved the motor sprockets until there was one tooth sticking straight up on there. Now you've seen on mine I already had some red paint on them, so I just kept turning until I had those sticking straight up. But once we had those two teeth sticking straight up, then we could go ahead and color that chain length with our red marker or your yellow marker, whatever you have. Now here's the pro tip. If you have one motor where the tooth is up, but the other motor, the tooth is on its side, then you simply click back two pages to the Align Pin tab, and you go ahead and you move that one motor until you get one tooth sticking straight up on both motors. Then you simply go back down to the bottom, click Next until you get back to the page you were on. So at this point, go ahead and use that marker color the crap out of that one chain length that's sticking that where the chain is sitting on that tooth that's sticking straight north. Make sure it's nice and visible and it sticks out and you can see that chain. Coat it really well. Then let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, folks, for the next step in this tab, you're going to need to know the distance from the top of your sled to the top of your spoil board. To do that, you can use that straight edge with the millimeter and metric measurements on it. I take this, I set it off to the side here, put it straight onto the top of my sled, make sure it's solid, and I get 383 millimeters. Now that I have that measurement, I scroll down and click Next. 
On this page, it asks me to take that measurement and enter it in the distance from top box. I enter 383 millimeters and I click Next. In the next step, you click Move to Center button. The sled will move to the center. This position is calculated in the software based on all the previous measurements you have entered so far. Now you need to tell Makerverse where the bit physically is in comparison to the calculated position. The picture above shows you roughly where my bit is setting in reference to the center lines drawn earlier in the slack the chain step. Based on the positive and negative rules, I am on center for my x-axis, but I am positive or up from the center on my y-axis. I will enter that information in the boxes and click finish and apply. It will now calculate your initial accuracy. Once you click finish and apply, if done correctly, your accuracy should be between one to three millimeters. Hey folks, that's it for the chain tab in the Makerverse calibration series. Next, we'll go ahead and move on to edge calibration. And as always, if you like my content, please click like and subscribe, help keep the channel rolling. And if you're buying anything from MakerMade, go ahead and use my affiliate code right here. Save yourself some coin, 10% off, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.